And now, the news. Good evening, viewers, and welcome to RTV News at 20 Hours. To present the news, my name is Senia Piri. We take a look at the stories making headlines. Manager in court over 51,000 kwacha theft charge. Two Lusaka churches in land wrangle. Lusaka Stripata Township records two cases of suspected cholera. Russia rejects accusations of war crimes over the bombing of hospitals in Syria. Now the news in details. Young African Leaders Initiative Yali says statistics of last year's presidential elections with two top parties Getting above 40% votes is an indication that the 50% plus one vote threshold is attainable. Reacting to concerns about various stakeholders and the general public stating that the threshold was impossible due to many political parties. Yali President Andrew Ntewewe said it was possible to have a winner of the election without a rerun as many feared. He said last year's presidential elections which had the top two contenders attaining 48% and 46% was an indication that the country would have a presidential rerun. Mr. Ntewewe said the constitution was clear about the requirements of one planning to run as president by providing other provisions aside the 50% plus one vote. He said the requirement of the presidential candidates to provide 1,000 supporters countrywide was received to eliminate all other parties. A land wrangle has erupted between two churches over who was the true owner of the plot on which they have both built temporary structures of worship in Lusaka's Kabanana area. The Kabanana Seventh-day Adventist Church has sued another church, the Salvation Army Chimwemwe Society, over the ownership of the piece of land they claimed was theirs since 20,000. The SDA church is in the area, has appealed to the High Court through a statement of claim that they have required title to the land owned and subdivision 24 stroke 79 of, pardon me, of stand number 8195. Kabanana Site and Service in Lusaka through an application of the Lusaka City Council LCC who issued them an offer later. They explained that after the offer later, the SDA cleared the area and put up a temporary wooden structure which they have been using for worship over 15 years. A customer service manager of Ecobank has appealed in the Lusaka Magistrates Court for allegedly stealing over 50,000 kwacham. Sebitwane Mwala, 44, appeared before Magistrate Shela Mwene after he was accused of stealing cash in the sum of 51,000 kwacham. Mwala could not take plea because Ms. Mwene recast herself from handling the matter as the accused is a person whom she knew on a personal level. She, however, reallocated the matter to another magistrate where Mwala is expected to take his plea. Mwala is facing one count of the theft by servants contrary to Section 272 of the laws of Zambia. It is alleged that on unknown dates, but between February 1st and April 31st last year, Mwala, being a person employed by Ecobank as customer service manager, allegedly stole 51,000 quarter property of his employer. He was arrested on April 13 last year and released on bond awaiting court proceedings. Mwala is expected to appear in court again this week for plea. In another court, two businessmen of Lusaka are expected to appear being in possession of 2,600 fake notes. Arnold Sakala, 32, of Mtendere Compound, and Samo Ngwira, 58, of Lilanda, are expected to appear in court after they were allegedly found in possession of 2,600 kwacha fake notes. Sakala and Guira are facing one count of purchasing fake notes contrary to the laws of Zambia. Well, just now we take our first commercial break. We'll be right back with more news. We serve a miracle working God. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Anything in your family which is idol, may you take over in the mighty name of Jesus. Apostle Stanford Chifita, Storms Mazabruk here, Venue Moscow Hall. Date 19th of February 2016. Yeah, 
time. Eighteen hundred hours too late. Hosting is what the stand for Tata Kuru. For more details, call us on the numbers on your screen. We want to hear from God when we don't talk to Him. No ways. We want to receive from God when we don't give Him. No ways. It's a shame how much we want to be loved and yet we don't love. It's a shame how much we want to be visited and yet we Welcome back. We continue with the news. The ambitious 257 million US dollars solar energy project, dubbed Kumi Kumi Zuba KKZ in Livingston, has advanced following the successful acquisition of 250 hectares of land for the project from the Ministry of Lands and Environmental Protection. South African born Zambian businessman and project chairman Richman Jovu said the land which was initially customary land, was under senior chief Mukuni's authority, is now state-owned. Mr. Njovu said that the drawings have also been done and that payment amounting over 1.2 million kwacha for the land will be made in the course of this week. He said the multi-million solar project is expected to produce 100 megawatts of electricity once it is fully fledged. Kumi Kumi Zuba is a local interpretation of 100 megawatts of electricity generated from the solar energy. The 100 megawatt output of electricity has a capacity to light up the whole Lusaka and support its commercial activities. Lusaka's Chipata Township has recorded two cases of suspected cholera, while Chibombo in Central Province has recorded three cases. Lusaka Province Medical Officer Kennedy Malama has said, this brings to five the number of new cholera cases recorded while the total number of patients is 16 since the waterborne disease broke out last week. Dr. Balama said the five new patients have been isolated and are being treated for cholera. He, however, said the condition of the 11 patients admitted to a Kanyama cholera center is stable. He said one of the patients admitted to the center was expecting and had a miscarriage. Dr. Malama warned the cholera is spreading and that it is important for people to take preventive measures. He is concerned about poor hygiene in markets and other food outlets, which he said are prone to cholera. Dr. Balama also said inspectors from the Ministry of Health are at a risk because residents of Kanyama are threatening them. The increasing number of boarding houses in residential areas of Lusaka is causing havoc in many families as wives complain that their husbands are cheating with female colleague students. The wives are now calling on the authorities to close unregistered boarding houses, saying they have been turned into brothels. Ms. Temwani Mwale of Rhodes Park claimed that husbands would lie to their wives that they were going to local pubs to watch the English Premier League football, which in fact they were seeing girlfriends at boarding houses in the neighborhood. And speaking on the condition of anonymity, one of the students told the Daily Nation that it was unfair for female students leaving boarding houses to be blamed for breaking marriages. Well, just now we take a look at the international news. France and Turkey have said that airstrikes on hospitals in northern Syria constitute war crimes. Up to 50 people have been killed in missile attack on schools and hospitals in the region, the UN said. Turkey's foreign ministry blamed Russia for the attacks. Moscow is yet to respond to the allegations. Meanwhile, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has cast doubt over plans to implement a cessation of hostilities in Syria. Last week, world powers agreed to work towards a selective truce in Syria to begin later this week. But in his first comments on the announcement, President Assad said such a ceasefire did not mean other parties would put down their weapons. Russia says it categorically rejects accusations of war crimes over the bombing of hospitals in Syria. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said those who have such statements are not capable of backing them up with proof. 
Up to 50 people were killed in measles attacks on schools and at least four hospitals in the region on Monday. Both France and Turkey said the strikes constituted war crimes. Turkey's foreign ministry blamed Russia for the attacks. The strikes came days after world powers, including Russia, agreed to work towards a selective truce in Syria due to lack begin later this week. The UN envoy to Syria, Staffan de Mistura, is in the capital, Damascus, to discuss the implementation of the cessation of hostilities, which could include the immediate delivery of humanitarian aid to besieged areas. Former President George W. Bush has hit the campaign trial to boost younger brother Jeb's faltering presidential nomination bid. He met veterans and appeared at a rally in South Carolina on Monday, ahead of Saturday's primary election. George W. Bush's legacy has come under fierce attack from Republican frontrunner Donald Trump. Jeb Bush, the former Florida governor, has spent a lot of campaign cash but failed to make it an impact. He's struggling to catch up with Mr. Trump and Texas. Senator Ted Cruz, who won the New Hampshire and lower contests respectively. Mr. Bush's famous family has largely kept out of his presidential nomination battle and he insisted last year that he was running as his own man. But last week, his mother, Barbara Bush, wife of former President George H.W. Bush, spoke out in his support and on saturday jeb bush defended his brother's presidency saying he had built a security apparatus to keep us safe well just now we take our second and last commercial break we'll be right back we save a miracle working god is the same yesterday today and forever anything in your family which is idol may you take over in the mighty name of jesus Opposed to Stanford Theater, Storms Mazabruk here, Venue Moscow Hall. Date 19th of February 2016. Time 1800 hours too late. Hosting is Pastor Sambo Tatakuru. For more details, call us on the numbers on your screen. We want to hear from God when we don't talk to Him, no ways. We want to receive from God when we don't give Him. No ways. It's a shame how much we want to be loved and yet we don't love. It's a shame how much we want to be visited and yet we don't visit others. Welcome back. We continue with the news. Oil minister from three OPEC countries, Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Venezuela, as well as Russia, agreed to freeze oil output at January levels as long as others follow suit. The announcement came after a meeting of the four in Doha. The move is designed to support the oil price, which has fallen sharply in the past 18 months. Hopes for such a move underpinned the oil price in recent days, but oil fell back from earlier gains. Saudi Arabian oil minister Ali Al Naimi said freezing now at the January level is adequate for the market. A male leopard that mauled six people at a school in India before it was captured has escaped its enclosure, officials said. The eight-year-old leopard strayed into a closed school in Bangalore on 7 February, injuring several people before being tranquilized. It was taken to Banageta National Park for medical treatment, but on Sunday broke out of its cage. But officials said it was no cause for public alarm. A recent wildlife census estimates that India has a leopard population of between 12,000 and 14,000. Leopards and other big cats have been known to stray into populated areas, and conservationists have warned that such confrontations may increase as humans encroach on animal habitants. 
Well, on that note, we wrap up our news for tonight. But just before we go, we'll take a look quick at the headlines once again. Manager in court over 51,000 kwacha theft charge to Lusaka churches in land Rango. Lusaka's Chipata Township records two cases of suspected cholera. Russia rejects accusations of war crimes over the bombing of hospitals in Syria. Well, we've come to the end of our news. Thanks for watching RTV News. From me, it's goodbye. God bless you and have a pleasant viewing. Bye-bye.